What a good day that'll be, amen? And thank the Lord when we see his face. And I praise the Lord for that good day. Kind of makes you homesick right now seeing everything that's going on in our world, doesn't it? Uh, but there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, that's for us to do, amen? Amen. And uh, as we talked about Sunday night, it's, it's our uh, responsibility uh, to be salt and light in this world, however uh, uncomely it may seem, seem and be at the, at the moment. Um, it's, it's exciting in a way. Um, they've never needed the answer more than they need it today. And I say they, the world. And we have the answer. The, the good part for us, we got it. We got the answer. We don't even have to look for it. We don't have to Google it. We got it. We don't have to do any research. We don't have to send chemists uh, somewhere in a foreign country to go look for it. We got it. <laughs> and thank the Lord for it. And good to see you tonight. Just good to be here in God's house. And I'm just glad. I tell you, every time I come in, I about start to, to weep. Just thanking the Lord to see you without a sun visor. And, and those that, that I hadn't seen in the sun visor, I'm glad to see you. And, uh, and, and just to be inside and, and be able to enjoy church, man, I don't ever want to get over it. And God taught us a lesson there, and I, we don't ever want to get over that. Philippians chapter number three, and we have, we have talked about, and, and last week we, we hit it pretty hard um, about pressing toward the mark. Paul, in verse 14, he said, I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, let us therefore as many be perfect. That doesn't mean sinless perfection. That means uh, mature, sound minded. Um, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. If you're, if you're spiritually immature, basically, or not where you ought to be. I don't know about you, but God many, many times has put the spotlight of heaven on my soul and pointed out something in my own heart that wasn't where it needed to be or an area of growth that we needed to uh, pay attention to. And you say, well, that's never happened to me. I'd be a little concerned about it because of the Holy Spirit, he's the great illuminator. And if he lives inside of you, he's going to point out stuff um, that's not right and even show you how to get it right. And that's through the word of God on how we get it right. Now in verse number 16, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Verse 17, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Now, I want to go back for just a moment and, and try to elaborate what is our main aim and goal in the Christian life. Now, we know according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Who, who is that? That's Jesus Christ. That's where wisdom and knowledge are hidden. There's treasures in knowing who. Is there some storehouse somewhere we need to go to? No, it's a person. It's Jesus and as we know him. Now, spiritually speaking, the Christian life is a process of one thing, really. Once you're born again, there's one really aim, and that is the process of pursuing Christ likeness. That is the goal, to be conformed. According to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 12, God's goal for us is to be conformed into his son's image. And so our, the goal of the Christian life, pastor, what is the goal? Is to feed the poor, to help the sick. To do, uh, the goal of the Christian life, is Christ likeness. So what was he pressing toward the mark? Remember the mark of the prize of the high calling? What, what is that mark? The mark is Christ likeness. And so what he's saying here when he says, I want you in verse number 17, brethren, be followers together of me. He's not saying, hey, I have arrived. 
but he's saying, I want you on the same highway with me. So he said, I'm pressing toward the mark. I've not attained. He even said that. He said, I ain't got there yet. I haven't arrived. And anybody who thinks they have uh, is missing, you know, they're, they're half of what they think they are, spiritually speaking. But he said, I've not gotten there yet, but while I'm pursuing the goal, what's the goal? What's the mark? The goal, the goal is Jesus Christ. It's conforming to him. It's to be more and more like Jesus Christ. That's called the process of sanctification, becoming more and more like Christ. That is the goal of the Christian life. That's it. I mean, that's why you were saved to be like Christ. Christian means Christ follower. And so that is the goal for us. So he says, I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm trying to become more and more like Jesus. And so as I'm doing that, not that I've already gotten there, but he said, I want you, I want you to follow me as I'm progressing in becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Now, we have young people before us tonight that need what Paul mentioned in verse 17. They need, they need somebody to pattern after. What did he say? An example. Modern day, an example. They need somebody to look to. Now, again, the goal is Christ likeness. That is the Christian life. Uh, you know, and there's so many books and different viewpoints about Christian living, about, uh, you know, followers of Jesus Christ. There's so many ideas, but really it boils down quite simply to becoming more and more uh, like him. Now, how does that happen? How does, how do we become more like Jesus Christ? Now, the objective element in all this is, is the Bible. God's word and the Holy Spirit working through the word to conform us. So if you're not in the Bible, you're not where we ought to be in being conformed. You say, people, preachers, get it. read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. And we ought to read it. But why do we read it? I mean, there's great historical facts in the Bible. The Bible's right and everybody else is wrong. There's great, there's great, I mean, they were bleeding people till they read in the Bible, the life, the flesh is in the blood. That's why you had the red on the barber sign. Because they had a sharp razor. They just bleed the infection out of you till they killed some people. And it, all they had to do was go right here. Same way with the world being round and, and on and on we could go. The Bible is right, but we don't just read it for scientific facts. And by the way, if the Bible, it's not a science book, but if it speaks on science, it's right. And it's not a, it's not a um, geography book, but it speaks on geography. Guess what? It's right. So, but I don't just read the Bible for geography. I don't just read the Bible for history. The Bible is what helps conform me to the image of Jesus Christ. So to say, I don't need the Bible is to say, I don't, I'm not interested in becoming more and more like Christ. So when we hit this Bible hard in the morning, and I hope you do, or we hit it tomorrow evening or tonight, maybe you read it at night and you hit it tonight. Don't just hit it with a check off mentality. I'm going to check my list and, and be okay. Listen, you hit the Bible in God. What truth do you have for me today through your Holy Spirit? Will you reveal it to make me more like you? Because boy, if we've ever need to be more like Christ, it's now. Because I'll tell you, when our flesh is in control, that's in, we're, for, the fathers from Christ's likeness as we'll ever be. So we need to become conformed and more like him. So the Bible, uh, the Holy Spirit, I mean, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So where do you go if, if we're going to be conformed to something? To his image, I got to know what that is. And in the Old Testament, of course, we get the scene set for us for Jesus Christ. The Old Testament creates a need for a savior, for fallen man, for a broken system in the Old Testament. And then announces his coming. The gospels record his arrival. Of course, we see Jesus here in the gospels. In the book of Acts records the immediate impact of that. Now, you know, Paul, again, is not putting himself on a pedestal here. 
of perfection. He's not saying I'm perfect, be like me. I mean, 12 through 16, he says, hey, look, I, I'm not attained. I'm trying, I'm pressing, I, I'm moving on. And so he, he's trying to uh, tell them, I'm climbing. And as I'm climbing, I want you to follow. How, how crazy would it be? And we, we get a lot, of, a lot of Christians like this. A lot of people in general like this. If, if Brother Sam and I were going on going hiking, we're going, we're going to climb a mountain. And I don't think I'm up for that right now, but, uh, or any now. But we're going, we're going hiking, and let's just pretend like him and I are going. And uh, going to the shooting range would be more like it, but let's talk about, we'll just say climbing. And um, so we're going climbing. And so I say, Sam, hey, you need, you, need, uh, you need a carbiner. You need several carbines to hook your rope. You need this many feet of rope. You need a harness. Got to have a harness. You need a helmet. And I'll give him all the tools he needs. And uh, I'll say, all right, Brother Sam, you start down here. Hook your harness up. And uh, you, you, you start climbing. And I'll guide you. And then I, I go to Baptist Hospital or I have my own helicopter. And I get in the helicopter and I go to the top of that mountain above where Sam's climbing. And I say, ho, ho, right, right. Ho, left. Put your foot over there. Now, can I, can I tell you, I'm not going to help him. I'm not going to help him. He needs to see if, if I'm, let's just say I'm the instructor and he, he's with me and I'm going to guide him up that mountain. He needs to see where I put my foot. He needs to see where I put my hands because there's some rocks that I may know about that, that are going to slide out when I put my hands in the crevice. I ne he needs to see where my hands and feet go. He needs to see an example. And I want to say tonight, you say, who are the youth club leaders? You. You. And I'll guarantee you, in every church in America, you say you're going to have something to honor young people or the kids, and some of the adults will think they, they get a pass that night. I'm glad you didn't. You say, that's just, that's every church. Every church I've been, been a part of. Somebody said, well, having kids things, I don't think I'm going to go tonight. Or I'm, huh? Come on now. And I'm glad you're here, so I'm not going to. Plus it's you because you're here. But do you know that we need what, what he's talking about here, what Paul's talking about? We need examples. And, and thank God for, for those Sunday school teachers. Thank God for those youth leaders. Thank God for those teachers. Thank God for nursery workers. Thank God for those people who have, have taught by example. Daniel just didn't fall out of a turnip truck and end up uh, standing for Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just didn't fall off out of the sky and immediately start standing up for Jesus Christ. They had to have an example. Somebody had to to teach him about faithfulness. Somebody had to teach him about courage. Somebody had to teach him the moral capabilities of doing what they did, of standing when everybody else was bowing. Somebody had to put that in them. And I want to say to you, church, tonight, it is no time for us as adults, I don't care what age you are, to stop leading by example. Let's stop having finger pointers and let's have some active examples. Everybody likes to point where to go and point what to do. It's time we had some climbers who were climbing and while they were climbing said, hey, right here. Right here is where you put, right here, right here, right here. Ho, 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 ho. I don't know if he's there today, but used to be a copperhead right there. Watch that one. We need examples. I mean, from, from the balcony to the main floor, nobody here, nobody watching, nobody listening is exempt from what I'm saying tonight. And boy, I tell you, I, I hope she's watching tonight. But, uh, and this is just recent, and I'm not trying to point out people and I always get in trouble when I do, but oh well. 
Uh, we have, I'm not going to say her name. I'll just say it like that way. Won't, that way I won't get in trouble, right? But she called me and she said, she said, Pastor, and she went on to thank the Lord for all that's, that's transpired and, and being able to watch live stream. And, and this lady, she's definitely not able to get out of the house. But just crying, weeping, thankful. And boy, she encouraged me so very much. She said, I just want to call and tell you. Well, I appreciate everything. You know what she's doing? She's leading by example. And, and church, let me tell you, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about some superior talent that you have. Paul did not say, you know, he had a thorn in the flesh. I mean, so he didn't say, I have this supernatural or, or this, you know, bigger than life talent that I want you to emulate. You can't emulate somebody's talents. So he didn't say, I, I want you to, you know, I want you to follow me as in my talents, in the gifts. It, it's not talking about following them in the gifts because nobody has the same exact gifts. Now we have lists of gifts given us in scripture, but nobody has the same gifts. Nobody has your personality but you. So you take the gifts God gives you and the personality he gave you and nobody can duplicate that. So Paul's not talking about, hey, I want you to follow in this, in this area. I want you to be a missionary, maybe to the, he's not saying that. What he's talking about is, hey, in, in his character, and there are things you can teach. For instance, being here tonight. You're showing the kids that it's important to be in church. Even when it's not there, when, when it's not your turn to be in the spotlight. You're showing them, hey, it's important. Even if I'm not getting a reward tonight, Brother Clint, you getting one? Not that he knows of. We're not getting rewards. That ain't why we came. Paul said, look, you know, I, I'm just telling you. I'm not talking about doing the same thing we're doing, the same ministry. I'm talking about example as in moral conduct and character. What kind of leader are we going to be if people can't follow? Man, I, and I know I'm terrible about this in driving. How many of you, I mean, and just be honest tonight, this confession is good for the soul, it's bad for the reputation. But how many of you be honest and say, that your wife has ever, don't lie, we're in church. Your wife has ever fussed at you when she's tried to follow you in a car because you go too fast or you turn too sharp or you don't put the signal on right. And I'm looking at a couple that you better raise your hand. You raise your hand. Oh, we got some liars in the church. Hold on, keep them up. Keep them up. Dave Bannerford, I was checking on yours, Joe. You better have yours up. And, and man, I can't, honey. And I remember, you know, as as an only child, we we didn't have no real big caravans. There was no younger, no little sister, little brother. I had to take nowhere. So I just figured if I can squeeze in there, get in there, right? If I can get in there, I I don't know about the rest of them. Didn't even think about anybody being behind me. Just you know, I'm driving somewhere. I'm getting there. How many of you like that? I'm driving and get there. I'm going to get there and that's it. And uh, so, and then, you know, when you get married, you have extra responsibility. There's another person in the house. Thank God there is. Hallelujah. And, and then I got, so now, I bet I'm the best, I'm the best leader in the car you ever seen now. I'll give that turn signal five minutes before we got to turn. Let me stop in the brakes, you know. Every time. And if that light even thinks about going yellow, I've done stopped. Even thinks about it. Ain't running through no light with somebody behind you. That's rude. Right? What's it about? It's about understanding there's somebody behind you. And I want to say tonight, there's somebody behind you. A whole lot of somebodies. And they watch how you do or don't read your Bible. They watch how you do or don't come to church. They watch how close or how not so close you are to Jesus Christ. Listen, we lead by example. You don't lead by your words. We lead by example. Paul said, 
I want you to make sure there's a pattern to follow. There's a pattern to follow. Somebody, follow me. Hey, I know the way up. I, if I'm going somewhere, I don't want to go with somebody that don't know where they're going. I want to go with somebody that knows where they're going. Like there's a few men in here that look, they kind of kind of like, you know, just get in the car and drive. That ain't the kind I want to ride with. There's a few men in here that when they go somewhere, they know like they done got 14 maps on the subject outside of the GPS in case it goes out. I mean, they're going to get there. That's who I want to go with is that person. What, why do you need somebody like that? Why do you need, listen church, these kids need somebody to model in front of them. They need somebody to model the way up who shows the process. Not just, hey, I'm here. Come on now. Go ahead. You've heard somebody instruct like, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Just go to that. Just, just, you'll see. You'll see when you get out there. Don't need no instructions. You'll see. No, no, no. Listen, our young people need somebody who will model and show them not only, hey, this is where I got. This is how you get there. You know what that's called? Discipleship. That's called taking time to, to show somebody. And, and this idea uh, of, of strategic plan discipleship, I believe in it. But I also believe in freelance discipleship. I believe in, you know, just find somebody that, that's saved and try to help them. Try to encourage them. Try to lead and model and be an example in front of them. You know, you need somebody to show you how to deal with fallen flesh. I mean, somebody needs to lead the way in combating this flesh. I never had a problem with the flesh until I got saved. Because I was going the way it wanted me to go. It's when I tried to go the other way. Boy, it gave me a trouble. Do you think, how do you, how do, you do this? I mean, I love God want to do right, but as Paul said... There's something else in me that's not wanting to do right. Matter of fact, there's a war going on inside. So somebody needs to, needs to show our young people, how do you win that battle? When the world and, the, and carnality are going one way, when your flesh is saying go this way, when your emotions are saying go this way, but God's word is saying go this way, I need somebody to talk to that has went that way, that has fought the flesh, that has fought carnality. We need somebody that just don't, well, I, just, I don't want teenagers to mess up like I did. Well, I don't either, but how about let's get somebody that made it through teen years and remain pure, remain whole. Not perfect. See, we don't like to do that. But man, if, I, if somebody, listen, I don't want, brother, if Bobby Sands was here, he may be here. But I don't want a race car driver teaching me how to drive that's done wrecked five times in a row. I really don't. Amen. We, we've got to have folks who have been through some things and come out with their testimony intact. Lead by example. There's some of you here tonight. You've weathered many, many storms. You've come through stuff that's unimaginable, stuff I know and stuff I don't know, and you've come through it. Somebody's been here as long as some of you in this church. You think everything's went rosy and peachy? You think there's ever been struggles? Sure there has. And boy, what I want to see is somebody that's went through that and kept their testimony and not got bitter. I'm so tired of seeing bitter Christians that can't smile. Listen, if you're saved, you ought to be able to smile. That's just not my personality. Well, you let somebody show you a picture of your grandbaby and it all of a sudden becomes your personality. Just smile. No wonder, listen, if you, the first thing about modeling a way or a path, you got to make it look worth going down. I mean, you got to make it worthwhile. 
If you, if, boy, it's going to be a rough day today. Have you ever got a paper? No, I ain't got a paper for it. Well, hardest thing I ever did. Now, I'm looking for a, a way out, brother Jeff. Like, where's the door? I don't want to do this. That's the way some people are about the Christian life. Some Christians, well, I don't know about, you know, I, it's, it's hard and everything. That's the best thing I ever did. And, and by the way, if we look like we've eaten half a gallon of lemons, there's no way that's going to be desirous to anybody. We talking about why are they leaving the church? Why are they leave? I'll tell you a big reason. They don't see a reason worth staying. Sometimes, you know, when they're struggling with the flesh, we just got to give them a good reason to stay. Because everybody's going to battle sometimes internally. And maybe a smile or modeling, modeling encouragement in front of them will be the reason that they stayed in the race and in the fight and finished the race. We need an example. How do we deal with the struggles of life? How do we deal with struggles? When I think about Brother Ronnie Venable and Brother King going through cancer, I think about, and others, I know others. When I think about how some of you went through cancer and battled cancer and, and still battling cancer, man, what a, what a great encouragement, what a model, uh, an example to follow. It went through struggles and made it through uh, with your testimony, with a good spirit, with a Christ honoring spirit about you. Hey, that's what we need tonight. We need examples to follow. These kids, these rewards are great. They need an example. They need an example. And that goes for you, first and foremost, dad and mom. But then it comes to us. And by the way, don't expect the church to take the place of you. Now, we're partners. This is not a solo flight. We're together. Well, I took them up out of the church. And look how they turned out. I paid for them to go to Christian school. Look what happened. It kept them in public school. Well, listen, don't blame it on somebody else. We got to do our job. And I'm not saying to every child that goes astray, let me tell you, you can do all you're going to do. When they, when they come to the age that they're going to choose whatever they're going to choose, they're going to choose it no matter who you are. The Bible did say, hey, when they're old, they'll not depart. They'll never forget it. It'll never go out of their mind day and night. If they do it wrong, they'll remember it. They'll remember it. Listen, we, they've got to have somebody in front of them. They've got to have a pattern. And, and, and teenagers, same way. Young people, 20-somethings. Teenagers got to have an example. Teenagers, little kids, thank you, on the moon and the stars. We've got to be a good example. How do we go through struggles? How do I deal with disappointment? How do we deal with trials? Some of you have been through all this stuff and, uh, and, and with great, I mean, still maintaining your testimony. Thank God for that. When I think about all the battles and, and, and you wouldn't know it, but you know, when brother, brother Roy, all the battles he and Miss Martha went through and, and brother Jerry, and then he'll get up and tell everything your whole life. But you think there haven't been battles? Trials? You think they've never been through a trial? Sure they have. Brother Jerry's got one of the sweetest spirits of anybody I know. You, you may say some bad stuff about a lot of people, but, if, but not, not really, okay? This is an illustration. <laughs> because that's not going to happen if I'm your pastor. I don't let people talk about church members. Amen. And we ought to do likewise about the pastor. Works together. But if there's one person, I'm just going to say you're lying before you ever get it out of your mouth. It's going to be Brother Jerry. It's, let me tell you about what Brother Jerry, uh, just stop right there. J-E-R, you may get to Jerry. <laughs> before you ever put the Y on there, I'm going to say stop. But I appreciate a good spirit, been through only the Lord and, and they know what. And, and 
listen, just happy, visiting, soul winning, still at it. Example, what a great example. How do you deal with trials? How do you deal with disappointment? And Paul told Timothy over and over, be an example, be an example, be an example. Brother Randy, you had one of the, one of the greatest examples. His father. Thank God for examples. Where are they today? Where is that? You know, I don't know about you, Brother, Brother Randy, but when I, when I was coming, man, if there's a preacher that I liked and I liked to listen to, and I wasn't worshiping no man, but if he had on a certain kind of shoes, I'm looking, I ain't telling nobody, but I'm looking for that same kind of shoes. Teenager now, 16, and probably what a 60-year-old preacher's wearing is probably not going to be in vogue for a 16-year-old, but I didn't care. If it was wingtips, guess what? I had them in high school, and they wasn't cool in 1990. <laughs> maybe coming out, maybe, maybe came back a little bit. But you know, I just, I thought, I want to be like them morally and character wise. But my goodness, and I'm not talking about man worship. We're so far from that. We, we got a generation today can't even follow instructions, let alone anybody. I'm not so worried about, about that because we're a long ways. Everybody questions everything today. So I'm not worried about man worship because everybody's got their own way. Nobody, you know, well, I'm not too worried about that. We don't believe in it here, but I'm just saying we got a generation that does their own thing. But man, I wanted to, I, I wanted to be just, just, and thank God for the examples. Thank God for the men that, that as I look, have you ever looked back on somebody and, and Nathan, you may have had this happen with your dad, but you, you look back and think, and not so much you and a dad relationship, but me and my pastor, I look back now as a 48 year old man and thought, Man, I worried him to death. <laughs> you ever thought about that? You know, look, maybe it's not a pastor, but somebody that, that helped you and you look back and think, I worried, I worried them to death. I bugged the fire out of them. I've thought that sometimes. I thought, man, I, I was over there all the time. I don't know how him and his wife ever had a date. I was always over there discipling. We was reading the Bible together. And now they can't even go on a date because I'm over there. I'm calling them, bugging them. As I look back now, boy, I'm so thankful for the time they spent. And let, me, let me ask you. And those grandkids, they need an example. They don't need a grumpy grandpa. Well, how to get quiet right there. They don't need a grumpy grandpa. They need somebody in love with Jesus got the love of Jesus Christ in their face and in their heart. Help us, God help us be a good example tonight. You have somebody coming up, they're coming right after you. He said, be, be an example. Be an example of what? Of Christ's likeness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for